Welcome to MMO Grinder's Side Quest, where I take a look at early open or closed beta, subscription trials, and simpler titles, giving you a quick first impression. Today I'll be looking at Tails Runner, a wacky, stylized racing MMO once published and then cancelled by G-Potato, but has now recently been picked back up for publication by OG Planet. Recently released back into its first beta test for the last week of March of 2014, let's take a look and see how they're shaping up under the new publisher. Given the apparent age of the game, the graphics aren't exactly top of the line, even for an anime-styled free-to-play game. The resolution is stuck in a full-screen square resolution and no option to change it, and even the graphics options don't really add or take away much from the game's overall look. On the plus side, this shouldn't give anyone any sort of trouble to run, and I was having no trouble or drops in the frame rate even running in large races. Courses are extremely colorful, and range from simple track and field designs, to castles, or even massive sprawling countrysides and mountain roads. The music is pretty much the upbeat stuff you'd expect to hear, but oddly enough it wasn't playing at all during the actual races, instead showcasing all the sound work, but making the maps feel strangely empty. There is, however, a ton of English voice work that might get repetitive, considering that many of the characters cycle through their 3-5 to five lines every time they perform a jump. It's still well done, however, but I can see it getting grating for some people. This game is weird. From the racing mechanics to the outright insane courses and structure of the races, everything about this game just seems chaotic and strange. Unlike racing titles, there's no real acceleration, deceleration, or steering mechanics. Despite a very short speed startup when running, it will not take long to reach top speed, and turning and stopping is rapid, almost instant, making the entire control scheme feel really stiff. Arrow keys move you in any direction, by default left control jumps, holding Z causes you to use a limited dash mechanic, and left shift uses items when you pick them up, a la Mario Kart. After a bit of an introductory scene that will talk you through the controls and game quirks, you get a set of tutorial quests that pretty much do the exact same thing. It's actually quite annoying when the game interrupts you to perform an action that you were just about to do because, for all intents and purposes, you already knew how to do it. Races can be done in single-player time trial mode, as well as the more expected multiplayer mode, which handles in the typical MMO lobby manner, having all players wait on the screen until everyone hits ready and the room host hits start, usually giving enough time for people to leave the room because they couldn't be bothered to wait for longer than 10 seconds. Races can also be done in team or single mode. As mentioned earlier, there's a bit of variety of the courses, and that also involves the game types, with some being simple sets of obstacles, such as a track full of hurdles, or there's being massive areas filled with traps and on some occasions enemies that you'll actually have to jump on to end the race, rather than just simply cross the finish line. Some courses even have a survival mode, where the goal is to finish the race as you run toward the camera from an ever-chasing threat behind you to finish the course without being hit. It's a bit tough to remark on the community right at this moment, what with it being the first day of the relaunched beta. The players so far seemed willing to say hello, but there's not much room for chatting in the races themselves, as expected. Players can also head to a lounge-style plaza to run around and interact if they so choose, as well as set up a personal farm area to show off their trophies. As for the attitude of the community itself, it's still up in the air. Whether this is going to attract the infamous Rumble Fighter crowd, or the more accepting and friendly Latale crowd will remain to be seen. As expected of a sports-styled MMO, most of the cash shop items will be unlockable outfits and characters that will offer different stats and stat boosts, a la Pena, and what will be gained with cash shop currency versus in-game currency is still up in the air. There are plenty of options only available as rentals in 7, 15, and 30-day increments, although there are a few items such as certain costume pieces and all the characters that are listed as permanent unlocks. While there's quite a few people who might be glad to see Tails Runner back, whether or not this will attract much of a new audience for a game showing as much age as this does will remain to be seen. But if you're a fan of really wacky titles and looking for something unquestionably different, you might as well give Tails Runner a quick jog through. Those interested in entering the beta can head over to tr.ogplanet.com to download the game as long as the beta period is up. This has been an MMO Grinder side quest, and it's time I logged out.